Ulanda, I will try to project quite a bit. And those of you who know me well, when I talk about things that you already know, feel free to nod off. I, I won't be, uh, you know, in any way offended. I'll just think that you're smart. Okay? Uh, those of you who don't know me, then don't nod off because every once in a while I see something at least of interest. Okay? Anyway, I'm Penny Perry, and along with my curator, Kathy Kanakin, who's sitting there and not standing up, <laughs> uh, we are the ones responsible for uh, the exhibition that's currently, uh, well, will be as, as of tonight, open at the Craft Council of BC. And the name of the exhibition is To Have and to Hold the Physical Book More Than a Quaint Tradition. And it was really important for me, I'll just say a moment and then I'll do a few other things, but really important to me to have both a to have and to hold. Although I know the young women who put up the, uh, the vinyl on the walls would have done anything to edit uh, bits and pieces and would have said, you don't need that second two. But of course to have and to hold reflects the marriage vows. And so it's all about tradition, and, uh, and, it, and it's Western culture. I mean, it, let's be honest here. It's books in other cultures look very different. But essentially, it is about to have a, whole, a relationship between humans and the book, among other things. So before I forget, welcome those who are coming in. I'll wait for one second. So there we go. I just started yet this thing. But before I forget, I'd like to thank a couple of people. There are many, many people who should be thanked uh, to help make this exhibit happen. I've already mentioned one, and that's Kathy Kinnikin. When people say, oh yeah, curator, don't they just sort of boss you around and tell you what to do and when to do it? She was very good at that. But she would always have a reason. She'd say, less is better, Penny. Take that one down. Oh, no, please. Should we do that? She also is one of the most skilled photographers, layout people. Like, I can list the tasks that this woman um, has skills for and never end. Plus, she just went extra miles to be on the brain who is the uh, ED of the Crown Council, who's at a conference, a national conference tonight, so is not here, was very, very supportive and very helpful to me. And I'm hoping that that thanks will carry over. Full <laughs> Photo, which is uh, a photo niche store. Uh, on speak up more? Speak up more? Yeah, you got to speak up. Yeah, I, I already actually know, unfortunately, you missed the part where I said there's no mic. Um, you, might, you and Barb might want to come up and sit closer, because I'm yelling as loud as I'm going to get to yell. But I come, come a little closer, that. too. Oh, okay. My little cheat sheet is Oh. <laughs> that would be my private handler. Is that, is that better? Yeah, you have a private. Everyone should have one. I recommend them. No, I think. Well, you could try. They already asked. Oh, you've already done that. But thanks. Yeah. Anyway, Vol Photo, this little niche, wonderful photo place, actually let me work in their upstairs storage, showroom, blah, 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 outside of hours. Uh, but if it weren't for that, and the giant spot, I could never have put this together. And uh, the manager of a photo, Carol Poloni is here. So it's partly new to Carol, partly new to Angie, and I wanted to make sure to thank those people. Someone who's away on a trip, I don't have a big long list, I only have about three more people, was Albert Normanden, who uh, I rented his printer from. And when you see the book, you might go, oh yeah, that's big, oh yeah, that's big, it's big. Well, you'll find out that there aren't that many people in the city that own a printer big enough to print 45 inch wide and then roll paper. And so we searched and searched and found Albert, who fortunately didn't mind at one point taking part of his printer apart. And I'm like, I don't think you should do that. I used to be a mechanic, I knew that. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I thank him. And I want to thank uh, 
two more people. They're not here. One is Baring, a fellow named Barrington, who works down the hall from me. And I know that this is not a statement about any, anyone else, but he just genuinely was interested. He kept like, how's it going? <laughs> oh, I, I like that. Yeah, I like that, he'd say. So I think that that means a lot to anybody in any field, to have somebody who genuinely is interested in your progress. So I thank him, and my last person is to thank my private heckler, who uh, has gone about calling himself an art widow in the last month, and, or six or seven, or whatever it's been. Curious. Curious. <laughs> a little bit longer. It's like when I say, I'll be home in five minutes. He goes, see you in an hour. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to make sure that I thank those people, because to make this book did take a lot of people. Now, I'll just give you a quick overview of what I'm going to say, so you won't think I'm wandering without any plan. I'll give you just a little bit about what is this installation about? What, what do you mean, how to rule the book, the quaint tradition? Why, why, who knows? And, uh, and then I will take you through, and you'll laugh at this, because obviously I'm very fond of the physical and questioning the virtual, right? Virtual reality, physical reality. But I am going to give you a little virtual tour, <laughs> just to, to prove that I'm not a Luddite, okay, uh, of the installation itself. And then I will give you just a couple of samples that would show to you that I'm not the only person in the world going, I don't know about this headlong rush into the virtual world. I mean, it's good, but are we going to just go, all right, throw out the babies, throw out the babies. We want, we want the, you know, with the bath water. Maybe we should keep some of the babies, and I think that's what this is about. So that's where we're going to go, and then when I'm finished, and I, hopefully I won't rant on too long, I'm usually terrible, uh, we'll just walk two, block, two buildings over, and uh, you can see for yourself, and have a bit of wine, I believe, and whatever. So, and that's the show. Stop me at any time if you're curious or interested, or just sit back and enjoy. So, what is this installation all about? I'll just have my next slide, which is actually they were repeating this one, but it's just a, more of a close-up of that book. And this was a book that actually Kathy and I borrowed, and we must return, about, about three or four years ago, but the man who lent it to us has great faith in us, Stan Rath, who owns um, a little art store on Maine. And he just is this interesting man who collects interesting things. He also makes canvases for people like Moritz Paul Lopez Willoughton. So we know, we know how he pays his rent. But uh, he also is just this fascinating man. And Karen, I think it was Kathy who was telling him at one point that she's very interested in an alternative process. And he said, oh, I have this old book. Brought it in and said, take it. When you're finished, give it back. And I guess when you look at this, can you roll that slide up at all, or is it, it's like, can you roll the image up at all? Um, that's the full image. That's it, okay. Because there's, well, maybe you can't even see it. Down there, what you, what you can see, and you will see it over there in an image, is this, yeah, there you go, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you've got bits of fine name kind of floating apart. You've got a small piece near it, you've got the, the texture of the book. We've got all of the things that, much as I love my iPad and my my computer, they don't have that. I don't put a hit there going, oh, I love to run my hand up and down the iPad. <laughs> Rarely have it. Now there are some people I'm sure that do, but I don't. Um, and and the sort of softness and the different colors and the tones and the little bits of things that you find in something that shows the character and the wear and tear of human touching. And again, I don't think you can say, well, I can tell that iPad has been loved a lot and you've been touched by the human hand. You don't say that, at least I don't say that. Um, but you do find books where you find people have written in them, or you find that someone has obviously turned down a page and then thought, ooh, they're trying to move that out, you know? Uh, so you do find that 
these kinds of things, the physical book offers a lot of evidence of humanity, basically, that there are humans and that we touch things. Now, in this exhibition, then, I had one basic question, just a little one. How, and this is it, how might our move to the virtual affect us as human beings, affect our basic nature? And so with that in mind, I began to explore the notion of what, are, what does the book offer as an experience that contributes to my basic human nature? And that's actually what you'll see, I hope, in the installation. In other words, it's an opportunity for you to look at different aspects of what a physical book offers that contributes to the development, I believe, of human nature. And what would happen if we just said, no, we're just going to go virtual. Okay? And I've used the term explore uh, for a reason, and it's a little bit of a sidebar, but the gallery at the Crown Council, its mandate really is for artists to step outside from what they normally do, not to, you know, do what they can do easily. I vouch for that. <laughs> So although there are uh, photos and text and many other found objects, etc., that I'm used to working with, the size and just actually making a book is not something that I'm terrifically skilled at. That's not what I normally do. So I think the gallery would be happy to know that I'm definitely stretched by doing this kind of thing. Okay. I'm just going to show you a couple of slides. So normally, these are from sort of uh, past photos from my practice. Um, anybody care to guess what this actually is? There's no, there's no real. I'm not going to say, oh, you pass on your smartphone. Smart. It's just uh, mushrooms. <laughs> it, you're close. Okay. I was at one point had this real fascination and well, love of obsession with. Uh, pistachio nuts. And so I just, I had them all over the place. And so these are pistachio nuts, obviously taken very up close, with a little piece of the skin from the inside the nut. And again, if you can roll that up, and look, I don't know if it's hard for you to roll up, but if you can't, oh yeah, that's another way to do it. All right. Thank you, that's enough. Um, and the, the uh, background is a brown paper bag that uh, was very meaningful to me. I was at a conference and I was starving but I didn't want to leave because I was really interested in what the person was saying. And this woman sitting next to me said, you, you look hungry, I'm going to like, And she said, here, have my lunch. And it was in that bag. So, <clears throat> so these are the kinds of things that I might take photos of. Uh, things that put together are not what they seem are taken from a different perspective and usually have meaning, either at least for me, if not for anyone else. Okay. And so photography is the medium that, that I have pursued. There's another slide of what I do. Can you next slide, please? So this is more of, uh, this is a recent bit of a small installation <laughs> compared to the one over at the craft council. And this was all about craft. Yeah. And uh, it was a photography invite to do whatever you wanted around breath. And so I invented this fantasy of a, <coughs> a worker who was doing research and collecting breath samples and putting them in archives and noting the personalities that could be told from the breath. And so there were little bottles all labeled beautifully with, you know, John Smith so-and-so, age, sex, blah, 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 and that was his bottle of breath. And then there were some photographs of it. So the narrative and the fantasy are also not new to me, although I have to say, once again, the stretch at the Craft Council was to stretch it really, to my liking, anyway, wild fantasy, uh, because what you'll see, the book, the story in the book, and the book is written by Alice in Wonderland. 
and the story is kind of her having opened up a trunk in her uh, attic and thinking, oh, I remember this, oh, I remember that. And it's all about an update of what have happened to her friends and, and what's happened to her. And of course, we all know that <clears throat> Alice is around any time you want her. I'd really like to be able to yell to her. So that, that notion of fantasy, that notion of photography, the notion of narrative, is all pretty much what I, what I like to do. But the notion of the book, which I love, and I keep taking courses in bookmaking, but I am not a bookmaker. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was a big stretch. Now, I keep going like this because I have a touch screen on my little uh, iPad. The other thing that uh, I don't need to mention, I'm just going to say that in this exploration of uh, what would happen if the world went, Western world, we went virtual in everything, is I'm sure you all see this. You sit on a bus. You used to have people going, oh, da, 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 chatting away. Now everybody's on their iPad, right? Or their iPhone, or their iPhone, or whatever. And you don't find a lot of conversation going on anymore. Then you find the little kids who their mother gives them an actual book and they're going, why won't it turn? <laughs> okay? So it's like, hmm. You know, they, they, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just something is going to go away. And my question is, do we know what we're losing? And are we, should we be making some efforts to keep it in different ways? Okay. So part of it was sitting on buses and seeing kids. The other is, I'm sure now you're familiar with trying to, uh, when you go to the library even, and uh, you no longer stand there and hand in your book, you just shove it through a little portal. And you want to check out your book, shove it into the little portal. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go to the, the grocery store, same kind of thing. People go, oh, yeah, go through the fast self checkout. I'm like, why am I missing the, all these opportunities to meet people, right? Why would I, why would I just want to go in the grocery store? I'm in the grocery store. I haven't met anybody, I haven't seen anybody, I'm happy, I'll have my iPad. <laughs> and so part of that exploration, again, is that social impact that we all get used to. It's very efficient, okay? it's, uh, it's very useful at times, you can load 50 books in an e-reader. Mm -hmm. I guarantee I'm not going to carry 50 books. So mm -hmm. it's efficient. It makes all kinds of sense in many ways. But there's a cost. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my, uh, my suggestion. Um, so I just want you to know that I'm not really against everything. But on the other hand, I do have a fairly strong opinion. So I have my next slide. Well, oh yeah, I forgot about that one too. Well, that's another aspect of my work. Um, and that was, I can draw back to the house. This is a, uh, a garden behind the window in Cuba. And uh, the other part that I didn't mention is, I really do think that inanimate objects have a life of their own. And that we just don't hear them enough. And we don't see them in their moments uh, when they're animate. <laughs> And so, along with this uh, image is a narrative that talks about whether the fence is keeping people out or protecting people inside. And so again, it's sort of the idea that an inanimate objects, if you listen carefully, all have a story to tell. And not just sort of that you can believe. I mean, I really believe it sometimes. You know. Anyway, that's also sort of practice for my photography. So now, moving through that, in the show is one piece that just looks like that piece of paper, and it says, Manifesto on the Value of Inconvenience. <laughs> because definitely, you know, it could carry 50 books, wait in line for the teller. All these things are inconvenient. But I would suggest that mm -hmm. every, even though there's inconvenience in everything, and I'm probably the only person that it, but you can read it for a real only go over there. The inconvenience of carrying a book, but the possibility of meeting people, a little bit of social interaction. Okay. The possibility of uh, 
the inconvenience of the absence of hyperlinks, right? Isn't it nice to, you know, you're reading along with me, that word me, oh, I'll just see what it means. I mean, or I'll check on my email, or I'll, yeah, 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 I, I'm up to date. I can't attend to anything, but I'm up to date, okay? Yeah? So my attention, and there's lots of literature showing that kids' attention spans are going kind of down the tubes. And yet, you have to ask yourself, do you care? What if everybody 50 years from now says, hi, that's all I have time for. Maybe that would be fine. Who am I to say? Okay. So, but that's part of the question. Uh, the inconvenience, and this is the one that I'm really concerned about. It's in my experience lately that when people want to offer help, it goes like this. I'll give you a ride home. I'm going that way. But if they weren't going that way, they don't offer. So inconvenience of caring can become a bad habit, right? If we just, or if it's a good habit to develop, I mean, the convenient caring can become a very bad habit. And I think again that things that take time, things that require, again, inconvenience, have some really big social ramifications. Can you so, focus that a little bit? Be focused? I don't think yeah, there, there will be a big version. Yeah, there's a big version over there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. Okay. So let me take you through the installation itself. So you're saying by now, all right, I know what you're saying. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. So the first thing that you will see is a very rather big, large book. And it could not again have been done without Kathy and I can saying, okay, I'll do, the, I'll do the really, and I'm going like, I can't reach that far, you know, I'm really going to, she's I have a longer reach. <laughs> yeah. But I did some of the folding, she did some of the cutting, she did a lot of, she's like invaluable. So I'll take my next slide and hopefully you'll see where I am. So that gives you some idea. The book's about that high, and it's about 40 inches wide. It is big, Kathy built the stand. So it's even bigger when you, when you see it on the stand. So that's what you will be seeing. Now, the, each of the components in the installation is meant to give you an opportunity to think about some aspect of books and what I'd like to think of as the book experience. Not just sort of like, oh, that's nice book. But you know, don't you remember reading when you were a kid or trying to learn to read? You might have good or bad experiences but it's all about that experience. So part of the way I thought might bring to mind the, the role of the book was to make it really big, outsized, draw people's attention to it, right? You kind of go down and boom, what's that? So that was one reason for making a really big book. By the way, people who are really good and skilled as craft bookmakers, Every time I go to the class, I'm learning how to cut corners. I still can't do it. And I'd, they'd say, why are you here? I'd go, I want to make a really big book. And they'd say, how big? You know, like, I said, oh, no, like about five feet. And they, they were all very nice to me. They didn't go. <laughs> but they went, wow. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I just, you know when someone's really experienced and they know that it's really impossible? <laughs> and you don't, they don't want to kind of curb your little, kind of like, it can be done. <laughs> uh, but so that was kind of an interesting experience along the way. So all of the text and the images and all of that had to be measured, folded, da 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 da. There's a, a spine to this book, as one would expect to book. There's covers, there's a text, and there's a story. And you're welcome to try and turn the pages. I suggest to turn them like that and turn them relatively slowly, otherwise it'll but you know it's gonna get used. That's what books are for, right? Alright. So let me just see. Yeah. I like uh, the first slide, the next slide actually please. So now that's the opening page, the dedication. And the dedication is really to, again, in line with, we should all be wondering, we should all be curious about what would happen 
if we went totally virtual. And so the book is dedicated, like Alice in Wonderland, <clears throat> to the spirit of curiosity. And again, you'll see the big books. You can read it. And there's a very tiny little book in a, in a magnifying glass. So don't get, you know, while well, people are looking at the big book, you can go and look at the little book. <laughs> so, um, and again, stop me if you are interested or uh, whatever, but um, yeah, you might want it. And again, what, this, what the size of the book was meant to make all of us think about was, you think taking books out of a library is tough now. I don't know that you would check this one out <laughs> and carry it home on, a, on the back of a truck, I guess, would be the, uh, the situation. Okay, so there is the large book in your, I think you will, I think you will enjoy it. There's also a place that I call the nook and the nook. So let's pretend the large book is where Charlotte and Sally are sitting. And across from it is a little rocking chair. The little comfy pictures on the wall. The little table. So you can sit and just look at the book. You can have someone read it to you if you want to. Okay? So part of the installation is to evoke the fact that the book is more than one little object. It is an experience, and all of us have had different experiences with it. So, and with this, it just disappears on you. That's a good experience. Okay. So there's lots of things in the, in the uh, that books hold memories, and that books hold stories of their own, not just the content that's in them, but as I said, the signatures and the notes that people have written, and the rips in the pages, and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. Now, speaking of stories, I need to mention that um, all of the text and the photos were taken by Alice. So you'll see that they're all by AKA Alice. And I'll have my next slide, please. And so the book has a number of sections to it. And the purpose of it, as I said, is Alice decided that she would um, just like to share where she's been since being that little girl who was like, yeah, that it, I'm at her. Yeah. And part of it was to share her uh, photography uh, hobby. And so there are things about Alice and photography that are in there that are her stories about it. And this, again, has to do with that notion of Inconvenience, the opposite of inconvenience being it's convenient, it's quick, it's efficient, right? And so part of the reason she takes photos is just because. <laughs> and, and that should be okay. One should not always have to have, at the end of the day, exactly what did you produce? And you go, oh, I did a lot of things. I, I didn't know. I, did I looked at the flower. And I, did. I know that sounds hokey, but you know. But I believe we're in danger of losing that because we are devaluing that as we value efficiency, measurable outcomes. Those. Then there's nothing wrong with those things. But if they become this high and the others stay down here, I think we're in trouble. 